Welcome to Energy 154, Unit 2, Efficiency and Energy Usage. So here's what we're going to do for Unit 2. You'll be responsible at the end of this presentation to do Unit 2 homework, the Unit 2 discussion board, including one original post of your answer to the discussion board question, and three replies to other students. You also should read Chapter 3, 5, and 7 from the textbook as this will help you understand the material. So first we want to look at the main uses of energy. And how we're going to do that is we're going to introduce what he does in the presentation of um, without hot air. So we can see there's two bars here. There's a red bar and a green bar. And they're composed of different technologies. Really what we're going to focus on today is the red bar. But the idea is what he does in the book without hot air is he tries to stack up the energy usage, which is the red bar, to see how that stacks up with the sustainable energy production potential, which is the green bar. So this is for done for the United Kingdom. And as you know, you'll be doing this in project one for a state of your choice. So again, to the left is usage and the right is um, renewable energy production potential. All the units are in kilowatt hours per person per day. So he gets a little lazy here. See how it says kilowatt hours per day? It really is kilowatt hours per person per day. And you really have to get really used to these units because you're going to be calculating a lot of things in kilowatt hours per person per day. And like I said, you'll be creating a chart like this for a state of your choice for project one. So the main idea is to see whether in that state there's enough sustainable energy production potential, the green bar, to satisfy the energy usage of that state. And we'll go over pretty much every single um, variety of this throughout the course. Okay, so this is one of my favorite charts of all time. So this is the um, United States U.S. energy use in 2011. And you can see that we've used 97.3 quads. And on the left side is all the things that we use to produce energy. Solar, nuclear, hydro, wind, geothermal, natural gas, coal, biomass, and petroleum. On the right side are all the uses. Transportation, industrial, commercial, and residential. And then in the middle is our electrical power plants. Because what the electrical power plants do is they convert the fuel from the left side into a different form, which we use in our residences in commercial, industrial, and a tiny bit in transportation. So what's nice about this is you can get the general idea of where all the energy in our system is going. So the first thing you notice is that the renewables, solar, hydro, wind, and geothermal, make up a very small contribution to our electrical generation into our total energy mix. The big ones are natural gas, coal, and petroleum. So the one other thing to notice is that over here we have a big bit of rejected energy. And all that means is that this is the energy that is wasted. So the easiest thing to think about it is an electrical power plant. We burn fuel to make electricity and a lot of that is given off as heat. You can sort of think of that as the smoke leaving the power plant. And that heat is the rejected energy. The same thing in our transportation system is that our gasoline engines aren't that efficient, so that rejected heat is the heat that comes off the engine. And same thing with industrial, commercial, and residential processes. So it turns out our rejected energy is much greater than our energy services. And that's where efficiency can come into play. So we can get much more efficient at um, using this rejected energy for useful work instead of uh, just waste heat. Now, we're never going to, because of the laws of thermodynamics, we're never going to be able to make the rejected energy zero, but we can certainly find ways to reduce that rejected energy. And that's a little bit of what I want to talk about in this unit. Okay. So again, energy use is the red bar, and we want to figure out how efficiency affects that red bar or affects the energy use. 
So now we'll talk about transportation energy and efficiency and see how the energy use and efficiency are related. So let's first talk about car energy use. And we can see that the author of uh, Without Hot Air estimates the UK person uses 40 kilowatt hours per day. Again, that's 40 kilowatt hours per person per day. So we can look at this general equation of the energy used per day by a car, and we can see that the distance traveled per day divided by the distance per unit of fuel times the energy per unit of fuel can give us how much energy is used per day by a car. So again, we can put these numbers in to give us a better idea of what's going on. The first number, the distance traveled per day, he estimates that it's 50 kilometers per person per day. The distance per unit of fuel is 12 kilometers per one liter. And the energy per unit of fuel, or how much energy you get out when you burn the fuel, is 10 kilowatt hours per liter. So you can see the units cancel out to give us 41.67 kilowatt hours per person per day. You'll find that the author tends to round the numbers when he puts them on the chart, just so it looks a little better. And obviously these aren't very, very hard numbers, so they don't need to be you know, rounded to, to the nearest ones place or whatnot. So that's why he just generally goes to 40 or 30 or 5 or whatnot. He's not too um, precise with his numbers. So that's how he gets that. So what I want you to do to answer for homework is, what do you think for your state, which car energy usage assumptions would be different? And also, what assumptions do you think would be the same? And the one big thing is, where is efficiency in this equation? So you'll have to think about that and answer that for homework. So now let's go to plain energy usage. So plain energy usage um, in the UK, he calls jet flights, it's 30 kilowatt hours per person per day. So let's look at how that's calculated. The energy used for a round trip flight, which he um, says it's of 14,200 kilometers each way, is two times the fuel used for one way because it's round trip, so that's where the two comes from, divided by the total number of passengers on the flight, and again, times the energy per unit of fuel. So he looks up numbers for um, a 787, I believe, and he says that that has 240,000 liters of fuel on the flight, and that's used one way, and 416 passengers when the flight's fuel full, and also their energy per unit of fuel is 10 kilowatt hours per one liter. So that is 11,540 kilowatt hours per passenger. And we can see that from our units canceling out. So that's not exactly the unit we want. So how do we convert that to the unit we want? So the other thing we need is the energy used per person per kilometer traveled. So we know that we traveled, um, we got 11,540 kilowatt hours per passenger. And we know we traveled um, two times 14,200 kilometers, because again, that's the round trip distance. So we can see that that's 0 0.41 kilowatt hours per passenger kilometer. So passenger kilometer is a little bit weird, but the idea is that for each passenger, for one passenger to travel one kilometer, it takes 0 0.41 kilowatt hours. Okay. So now again, we want to get that into our units of kilowatt hours per person per day. So let's go on to the second slide of plain energy usage. So again, from our last slide, we had energy used per person per kilometer traveled. So that's right there. Now we want to get energy used per person per day. So we get the 0.41 kilowatt hours per passenger kilometer. And this is how many total um, miles someone would travel in a year. So 28,400 passenger kilometers, or basically how many kilometers one person would travel a year. So that's what this number means. And then we also know that one year 
equals 365 days. And if we, again, do our unit analysis, that gives us kilowatt hours per person per year. And again, it's very close to what he assumes for jet flights. So I want you to answer some similar questions for plane energy usage. So what assumptions on this plane energy usage would be the same for people in your state? And what assumptions would be different? Also, where's the efficiency in the equations we just went through? So now that we've discussed plane energy usage, our next topic is going to be heating and cooling energy usage. And McKay splits this up into a few categories. And you can see on his bar chart, the 37 kilowatt hours per person per day he attributes to heating and cooling. And the first thing is appliances that he says is heating and cooling. And you can see a list of heating and cooling appliances in a typical home. And we also we have the power listed, the time per person per day, and the energy per person per day. So what we really want to figure out is, from the first two columns, how do we get the third? So he assumes for air and cupboard drying and washing line drying, he assumes a couple things. The washing line drying obviously is zero because we're just hanging clothes out to dry. And then the air and cupboard drying he assumes is 0.5. So let's look at how we calculate the third column of the chart. So this is much easier than the plane calculation. So let's just do the kettle. So the first one in the kettle. So it uses three kilowatts and it uses it for 0.33 hours per person per day. So if we multiply those two together and look at our units, we get kilowatt hours per person per day. So that's, that's an easy one. So for homework, I want you to repeat this calculation for the microwave. And you also have to put this in for when you're doing your project for your state into your Google spreadsheet. So now we're going to look at another heating and cooling energy usage, and that's heating or cooling our homes or our businesses or our offices. So for the United Kingdom, just like usual, um, the author of the textbook assumes air conditioning energy usage is 0.6 kilowatt hours per person per day, and the energy usage for heating is 24 kilowatt hours per person per day. So what we really want to think about is, would that be good for our state? So if we think about it, we know that energy usage for heating and cooling depends on your climate where you live. So we can't, unless our climate is very similar to um, the United Kingdom's, we probably can't use those numbers. For example, if you lived in Arizona, your cooling energy use, um, especially if you lived in Arizona and like Phoenix, your cooling energy use is probably going to be very high and your heating energy use is going to be low. So using these two numbers is probably not the way you want to go. So what I want to do is show you a simple thing that we can do to calculate um, our heating and cooling use for our state. But first we need to um, define a term. Then this term is called degree days. So degree days are um, sort of a complex calculation, so we're not going to go over it too much here. But really what they are is just a simple approximation of the amount of heating or cooling an area will need. So heating degree days, the more heating degree days some, a place has, the more heating it will need. And the more cooling degree days a location has, the more cooling it will need. So just, just know that. You don't, again, you don't need to know how to calculate these. So let's look at how we can use these. So we're going to come up with a few steps to approximate our state's heating and cooling energy usage. So step one, we're going to um, know that the heating degree days in the UK is 5,400, and the cooling degree days is 2,000 or 211, and that's in um, day degree Fahrenheit difference. Again, don't worry too much about the units, but just know that we're using far degree Fahrenheit because you're going to need that when you calculate your degree days. And we know again that the energy use for heating is 24 kilowatt hours per person today, per day, and the air conditioning use is 0.6 kilowatt hours per person per day. So what we're going to do is we're going to for for your state you're going to look up the annual degree days for your state using the website degreedays.net. And I'm not going to go over how to do that here. It's pretty self-explanatory. Then for step three, once you have the heating and cooling degree days for your state, you're going to use a ratio of the degree days and the given UK energy usage to calculate the air conditioning and heating energy usage for your state. That sounds difficult, but we're going to go through it, and actually it's not that difficult. So let's go through an example. And the first thing you want to do 
for you want to know for your homework is that when use degreedays.net and calculate how many heating degree days there were in Atlanta, Georgia from the period of the last 12 months. So that's a homework question. Just to get you familiar with degreedays.net and make sure you can use that correctly. Let's move on to an example. So again, number one's not going to change because those are all our assumptions for the UK. I use degreedays.net to calculate for Wilmington, Delaware, my hometown. I use the heating degree day. I, I saw that the heating degree days were 4,678, so a little bit less than the UK. But the big difference was the cooling degree days. There was 1,478 cooling degree days, where there's only 211 in the UK. So now let's go to the next slide to, to see how we use these two numbers to and a ratio of the heating and cooling energy usage to get the the um, estimate for Wilmington, Delaware heating and cooling energy usage. So for air conditioning, we see that the the 0.6 is the kilowatt hours per person per day, and the 211 for the UK, and the 211 is the cooling degree days in the UK. And since we don't know how many kilowatt hours per person per day are used in Delaware, we put we make that x, and we do know the cooling degree days is 1,478. We make that um, on the bottom of our ratio. And if we solve for x, we get a higher usage of air conditioning in Wilmington, Delaware, which makes sense. So at 4.2 kilowatt hours per person per day. So for heating, do the same exact thing, except we just um, substitute in heating degree days on the bottom here for each location, and we substitute the heating energy use here. So it's a little bit mild there in Wilmington in the United Kingdom, so we get 20.8 kilowatt hours per person per day for heating in Wilmington, Delaware. So one other homework question I want you to answer is how do you think we can reduce heating and um, air conditioning energy usage? So just name some ideas. You can get some ideas from the textbook, but you can come up with your own too. So come up with a few ideas for that homework. So we also have a bunch of other um, energy use categories that are up here at the top of the bar graph. So what I want what I want to do is um, in this course is more focus on the sustainable energy technologies, so the production technologies. So I don't want to go too much into this. So what we're going to do for the purpose of time is just assume that for lights, gadgets, food, farming, fertilizer, stuff, transporting stuff, and defense, that for your state, all of these are the same than as for the United Kingdom. So you don't have to do any of the calculations for this or anything. So and I gave you the solutions in the template um, for, your, for your project for this. If you want more information about these categories, feel free to read the textbook. They have some great information about these, but you're not required to. So for your Unit 2 discussion board, um, you're going to have to um, answer this question and post it on the discussion board. Which category of energy use, so car, jet flights, etc., so any of these categories, do you think could be reduced the most using efficiency and conservation in your state? And also, which category of energy usage do you think could be reduced the least? And I want you to really dig into that and answer why. So again, the check sheet is do the homework. So you've been seeing some of the homework questions throughout this presentation, and there's some more you'll have to answer too. Do the discussion board, which we just went over. And for the discussion board, you want one original post, which answers the question which is just you answering the question, and three replies. So your three replies can be to someone else's original post, or it can be a re uh, response to someone who's replied to your original post. And then again, you want to read chapter three, five, and seven from the textbook. 